And we're live. We're live with some stuff. More good old stuff. Uh, hang on. I just need to run over to watch myself live. So I can count as a view so I can get to affiliate. <laughs> Alright. So guys. Yesterday, we got to being able to check our balances. Let me just start the bot up. Um... But yeah, yesterday we, we were able to get the... We're printing the balances, so we're constantly updating our balance, you know, based off of what's going on there. I can also get it by typing in slash balance. But this currently uses a different function that like really digs deep into my balance and I don't really need the full on deepest, darkest depths of the balance. Maybe I do. It goes to this available function. And we get asset precision, which is not a bad thing. Asset precision, pretty good. Um, we might actually want to move that get asset precision up to um, up to my utils over here, because right now the precision is just a a number. Um, so I'm actually gonna move my get asset precision here. I'm not moving it. I'm, I'm basically copying it and putting it there so we can get the asset precision of the uh uh so we need the, an asset which means i do need to um add asset as a an additional uh additional string here which might mean you want to start turning this into an object later to do consider turning into object input like instead of it being like just multiple parameters i think that would be a good idea uh so we'll first say if the asset exists then that otherwise we'll do four like let's just do that um i'm thinking did we have another one like available did we have another one for price precision? Uh, I think the the dollar precision is always two. Round price to pair. Yeah, like we're always going to make the precision two for the price to pair thing because USD. The we might like upgrade it later, but right now I think we're focusing on just core cool things and we'll worry about outliers later. So theoretically. What will start happening now is if I restart this bot, then these these amounts should get better, I think, over time. I don't know. Will they get better? Um Yeah. I don't know. Uh looks like it doesn't. This round units to pair. Oh, it's because we're not setting acid anymore. Where do we do that? We are Wait, are we doing it round units to pair? Okay, so everywhere we see round units to pair, we're going to try add in the asset as well. Do we have the asset? We do. Oh, flip. Okay, I'm going to need to go into my utils and say, let's get assets pair. We also have to say case uh, BTC option. And we'll just say change this dot to uppercase. Just in case, you know, like make it more flexible and variable. What's this one? Okay, it's supposed to return a number. By default, we'll return four. Let's do that. Um, because that's like a nice middle ground kind of number. Um, Right, just thinking what's the best thing to do here. Uh, we don't need to worry about that too much. This we'll leave as is, I don't want to mess around too much. So everywhere we have around units to pair. Um, uh, this, this thing. Okay. Make it undefined in the middle and then make this asset there we go we have an asset 
I mean, theoretically now, because we cater for this. We just have to round uh, units to pay, because even the... We don't need round price to pay anymore. Because, yeah. They round units to pay. They... Do you want to round up, up our available or round down? Let's round them down. Our available stuff will be rounded down. So also make this down. Because that would be useful to do, you know. Make it rounding down. Um fucking our asset there. Yeah, so we got all round units to pay. That's asset, asset. Okay, cool. It's only done in these places. That's good. Um, so theoretically, if we reset this now, it should be rounded correctly. See, that's to six, that's to four. Is it supposed to be the four? It's supposed to be the five. What's the asset that's going into there? That's a bit confusing. Because default's four, that means it's being something else for ETH. Um, let's just console.log the asset quickly. Um, see if this, what's coming out here, because something's up there. Um, yeah, something's definitely up. So we have ETH. Okay, so that sh that precision shouldn't be four. Um. Hmm. Let's make asset compulsory. Not impressed too much by my the rounding. Okay, so asset will be compulsory, but then we have to print it first. That's the plan. Um, and now since asset is compulsory, we're always going to use this get precision asset. ETH that should return 5. Where that it was returning 4. Quite confused. We even converted to uppercase here. Um. Odd. Okay, well that's okay. So everywhere we see this asset comma. We literally just take it out, we move it there, and we comma it and remove those comments. I hope I didn't break anything. If I had to do it all at once. Yeah, let's see. Because the ETH should have five digits. Precision of five. That's only got four. So, I don't know. Like, why is that happening? Uh, it's very confusing because yeah, we know that's the asset. Um, unless I have that specific amount of ETH, let me just check what's my available. Um, I need to check on Luna. Uh, on Luna, my oh, it's because I don't have a fraction of ETH. That's why this is happening. So it is working. I just. I only have that much ETH in my wallet, I think. I have like a round number of ETH. That's quite a coincidence, actually. Um, but let me just check if 5 is the right one to say. So let's say I've got this ETH to BTC. No, that's not right, because I have... I do have 0 0.01149. So that is a bit odd. Um, confused. I'm confused why this asset value is what it is. Like, let's ditch that. Hop into our little utils here. The console.log asset. So let's see if we ever get ETH in here. I guess we just never get ETH. Uh, 
Oh, we do get ETH. Then why is it returning four? Are we using this asset precision? Be fixed. Bit annoying. Console dot log. Oop, not what I meant to do. I'm gonna say console dot log, and we're gonna say uh, asset and precision. I right, check that. If this, it's like classic debugging, guys. A lost fool right now. Oh, it even says five. What the flip? I don't know, guys. I don't freaking. Know. The problem is not there. Uh, the problem is probably here for the accuracy. What if I make this six? No, it makes no freaking difference. Just straight up ignores it. I make that six. Does that make a difference? Using AF. Ah, oh, man, what's this? The USDC even goes up. Maybe I literally have that much uh, ETH. Let's check the amount. So we'll say precision. And we'll say amount. As another... Oh, not at precision.amount. What am I doing? Yeah, that, that we expect it to break. Try this now. Okay, so the amount of ETH... Look, we have more ETH. Okay, wait. Okay, we don't have that much more ETH. So, okay, that makes sense why it's four because we're rounding it down and rounding this down will still be Okay, so our results are actually what we expect it to be um, Okay, so the next problem that we have Wouldn't call it a massive problem. Is this currently when we use available and when we use balance They both return the same number when they could be different uh, If I have like open cell orders um so what I want to do, oh, let me just ditch this, but just have console log somewhere hidden away, probably do, uh, nothing there, okay, yeah, that's working now, okay, so at the moment we use like a completely different function, we use available and balance, so I'm actually gonna get rid of these, oh, I'll not get rid of them completely, but copy them a bit like right now we're working it out etc um i'm not gonna worry about a cooldown for balance right now because i think that's quite relevant i think the balance check is we'll add it later maybe if we need to but right now i just want to get it to work using the lunar api instead of this commands api so in the lunar api we're gonna add a new public command called uh get balances and we'll say i mean it's a void and what did the previous one say balance command on cooldown and all that stuff uh yeah we say lunar available balances in the result so the result is just going to be this dot balance. Oh, and it's going to depend on what they wanted there. Well, what's the result? Hang on. This result. Okay, we, we join it. Okay, so we join the, the actual results. So we're going to say this dot balance. I think we have to say object.keys, right? Object.keys. Ah, right, let's move this out. Call it result again. First of all, we say if there's no channel, we don't want to escape this, we just return because that, that could be a problem. Um, and then I'm gonna say const result. 
results is going to be um, object of keys and from here we, we're looking at this stop balance yeah and we're going to say we're going to map to the keys we're going to say it's going to be pretty much asset that each key is an asset and then we say this stop balance at asset that's that's pretty much okay let's see what do we do here so to get the balances fine to get the available we have that too and then i guess we just do this thing with the asset no the asset's correct so we just say the number get asset precision i think the precision's already done for us as well so we don't even have to do that so we just want to return basically that value and we'll say underscore asset oops uh asset like that and this needs to be closed and that close that and then we we join them dot join with a little pipe thing that's what we do right yeah i just need to figure out what's wrong with this okay so that's good we close that we open there we close there uh, there's the bracket there that's unnecessary okay perfect we've done it cool Oh, my boss literally told me to take some time to recover. Ah, oh, legendary. My, my boss is amazing. I work for a really cool company. <laughs> oh, no, my camera. I've broken my camera. Well, I haven't broken my camera. I just moved it a bit. Let's move it more this way. There we go. Uh, right. So now, theoretically, we have a get balances. We want to do a similar thing. With, oh, sorry. We say get available. I guess if I like to do my alphabetical rule. Sort of alphabetical. We have the starting thing that just happens at the start. We get available. Instead of saying the stop balance, we'll say uh, available. And instead of saying Luna available balances, we say is Luna balances or Luna available balances. It's slightly different. Like, you know, I know it might be confusing to some, but it is what it is. Okay. Yeah. So now in our main find thing here, for available, we want to return uh, Luna API dot get available. And then balance slash balances, we're going to say Luna API dot get balances. There we go. Uh, so now theoretically, I need to restart the bot. If I say uh, available, we can see that's correct. Right now, my available and my balances are the same. Uh, so I will be just doing something quickly. Um, What do I want to do? Okay, let's say I want to buy... I guess I could say let's buy some BTC. That's quite cheap at the moment. Oh, I said but BTC. That's not going to work. Buy BTC. Didn't work. Oh, because I don't have any USDC. Okay, let's, let's sell some ETH then. So we'll sell and we successfully create a... Uh, like buy order to buy back lower so now you can see there's a slight difference here so if i say available that's how much is available if i say balance that's how much is available there used to eat so that's pretty cool i'm happy about that i know i could probably make these like layouts look a bit better or something i don't know mix them up with some emotes but that's not too much of an issue right now. 
I'll wait for people to recommend emotes. Um, I don't think I need to really... Um, what was I going to say? I don't really need to console log this anymore. So let's go to the console. Ditch that. We don't need that anymore because we know that works. So let's quickly say git add, git commit, m, uh, rem, well, they moved. Actually, I need to delete this file as well. It's available. We're not using it anymore. I can remove it from here as well. So I'm not importing it. That's good. So they're all coming from the same class now, which is really cool. Um, we move from this like commands thing to a more like I don't know, better kind of. Thing. Um, right. So I need to. Sorry, I need to add this. Now, next up, we are gonna say, oh, what is it saying now? Okay. Moved, available, and balance commands the API class because that's useful. Right. Next up, we need to do some checks. Some pretty cool checks. What I actually wanted to do was I wanted to monitor, like, you know, we have this um, successfully created buy order. I want to monitor and say, like, you know, um, like buy order fulfilled or sell order fulfilled, you know, just so we have the random like heads up that, hey, it traded back, you know. Um, so that would be pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> Right, um, what I need to do, what I want to do for fun, basically, is I want to move some more USDC out of my savings wallet into, into here. So, let me go do that now. Move, I'm going to move like $50 over. That shouldn't take too long. It just... It'll probably take like a minute. But yeah, we're moving $50 over. Uh, theoretically, it's still up there here on the old running bot. As soon as this... Uh... Still running? Yeah, it is still running. Uh, there we go, it's moved over. So now, theoretically, we can buy some ETC. This is really cool. Now you can see the slightly less available BTC. What? Why is that the case? Oh, that's always been the case because I sold some earlier. And let's buy some ETH just to make sure ETH is working. So I want to uh, make a command that says we don't have enough. I think we, yeah, we're only 20 minutes into this video. So what we could do. What we'll probably end up doing is, well, I know what we've got to do. We've got to run into this Luna API now and put some comments into where I need to do that. Yeah, I need to check the, the current volume. And this is the problem is I started with this uh, if volume is less or equal to the current, you know, volume. this volume needs to be named to something better. Um, This is the, uh, I'm going to call it buy price. We'll call it buy price here. What's this order? Order ID is being used before it's assigned. No, it's not. Oh, it's happening because of that. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Uh, it's just there's stuff for work in progress. So these volume things, they don't make sense on their own when you call them just volume. We're going to have a volume done. So this. Yeah, I'm going to call this buy price as well. That way at least the volume specific. And then down at the sell command, I think we also have a volume, right? 
Oh, we just say the minimum volume. Um, which is like the sale price, I guess. Or no, wait. We have to go to the market order. The market order is up here. Okay, yeah. So we just sell for the... Okay, cool. We'll worry about that later. My main problem is usually buying. I usually run out of money. You know? I'm never going to have problems selling, right? I always have tons of crypto. We don't sell, we only buy. I've got notifications on my phone already saying that, like, you know, trades are happening. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, we can go crazy with that, which is cool. Um, right. Back to here. So, if buy price is smaller or equal to this dot, uh, this dot available dot BTC. Then we're going to return out of this function. We can't continue. And we'll do a client.say normal channel thing. Um, we'll say not enough funds to buy BTC. We'll say um, available. Sorry, I gotta make the uh, back ticks. We'll say they're available and we'll say they're required as well. And we'll say USDC is what's required. USDC. What? <laughs> I can't spell. Um, okay, so available will be the start available of BTC again. We got that context and then required is going to be buy price so theoretically i think we might be able to buy some let's buy some more eth like a bit more eth just so that we we know um i need to restart the bot bot's going to stop printing our available price Okay, so we're going to say available. Hey, Carl, what's happening? <laughs> uh, right, it helps if I wait for the bot to stop before typing. Oh, it helps if I spell this right. Uh, available. Okay, cool. We have no money left. Perfect. So now, if I try to buy Bitcoin. Oh, no, it still failed. Yeah, sorry. I need to do some debugging here. live on the tree debugging it accidentally like um one of these might be a string that's why because i know that failed because we don't have enough it's not black for me i can see it on the side here <laughs> Um, yeah, I can see it on my side screen on a different device, so the screen's definitely working. Okay, let's spend all my money. Okay, what's happening here? Okay, if buy price is... Wait, what? How's my available BTC? Oh! This available BTC is not what i need i need to know so the buy price is correct that's how much it costs but i i need to use available usdc for this okay yeah that makes sense the underscore thing here yeah i don't know you might just need to restart your stream or something because uh, i i can see it fine on the side here let me refresh my page and see if that does anything Yep, it works. I can prove it works. I'm watching on my laptop. That's me working. That's my face. That's on Twitch. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, okay, so that should fix that bug. Right. Okay. This is good. Progress. 
Um, but now, if I run by BTC, uh, oh, wait, what? Oh, the login is available. I mean, the code's right, it's just the logs. Right. We can debug this further. Let's run that again and see if this figures it all out. That would be nice. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> my, my boss actually told me to take the rest of the afternoon off, so I'm probably going to stream until Shanks goes live. Be pretty cool. Um, buy BTC. Okay, this is less or equal to. So that's, that's the problem. Is that that's true? We want that to happen if that's true, right? So let's check if that comes out as true. We are saying buy price. Oh wait, we're gonna say if the buy price is uh, bigger or equal to is bigger than the available. A oh, freaking idiot! I am so stupid. I don't even need a console log that. I'm just being dumb today. I'm being very dumb. <laughs> Crazy stuff, right? Um, yeah. Let's restart the bot. It's confusing when you work with so many different like values. Different, yeah. There's just lots of levels of complexity. But... Probably work better if I wrote better code, like cleaner code, but nice. We'll clean it up as we go. We did quite a nice cleanup yesterday. I just think this whole process is a bit messy. Uh, we might want to like, you know, put this whole layer like into a function, you know? Like buy BTC and just pass it the values that we have in the function, you know? Might be better. Okay. So there we go, we said, uh, I said not enough funds, not enough funds, idiot. Available, we have 17.8 USDC, and required is that much. Good. I just want to check something in my utils. We have the round price to pay. accuracy thing because that shouldn't really be like that i mean it's fine for now i don't really care that much we'll worry about that later um we'll worry about that when we're building like a react app to go with this or something okay cool so now we say we have not enough funds oh crap we have enough now what's this okay let's try buy bitcoin again not enough fun. Oh, sh yeah. You yeah. yeah, run the spot again. Okay, it looks like the Bitcoin we bought just now accidentally sold off. It's good. Okay, so we try to buy BTC now. It says not enough funds to buy BTC. Available USD required that much USD. That is great. Um, we want to do a similar thing now with Ethereum. That shouldn't be too difficult. Um, yeah. Does this ask doesn't matter. Okay, so we have a buy price. I guess I'm just going to copy the whole process and tweak it a bit. Not that different. We have the buy price. Oh, we don't need this anymore. That's correct. Okay, cool. Buy price is bigger than this dot available USTC. Then we just say not enough funds to buy ETH. Yeah, that's actually it. Great. Yeah, we definitely need to consider moving that into like a smaller function as well later. We'll make it like a, a buy functions thing and all that. Yeah. Um.
call it like trading functions or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, right. So theoretically, I can try and buy some ETH. Successfully bought. I wonder if I should say my available funds after successfully, uh, At this successfully created sell order, we should see our available available funds. Like, yeah, probably a good idea. I think I need to make a, a util called um, get available export function get available results funds results that's probably a good idea and then we're going to accept available which is going to be What's the interface for that? Amounts, right? Yeah. Amounts. We'll return a string, basically. And then look at our main app here. Like, we basically want this. This is going to be reusable now. Return that. Instead of this dot available, we just say available. That's an interface that we can get. Bounce, I don't know why it's not importing from interfaces. Yeah. So, theoretically, back here, results, we'll just say get available results will be this dot available. A lot simpler. Yeah, fetch that from utils. Okay. That's good. Um, so, theoretically, I should just do the same with get balances. This is called a get funds results, actually. funds or it funds like that yeah alphabetically that's still fine the get funds results so the cool thing about get funds results is we can pick the same thing in here and we can just say the stop balance in there because the types are exactly the same as well which is really cool that's a lot cleaner as we can see um So, the successfully created sell order. I want to do a, um, hmm. How often do we fetch, uh, we must make that a constant. Okay, so constant, we're going to say, um, for const, uh, bitch, wait, monitor timer interval. Okay, and that's going to be 5,000. And we'll have a monitor ticker interval as well. That way, at least it's all in one place, and we can have like a place to see like what the timing and stuff of things are. This monitor ticker interval is gonna be somewhere where it says a thousand. There we go. 
I could call it monitor prices to well actually that would be sick see what is this this shouldn't be timer it should be monitor um monitor balances level okay cool There you go, monitor prices interval, where's the 5,000? We want to say monitor balances interval. Fantastic. Monitor balances interval is 5,000. Okay, cool. So the great thing about this is what I want to do now, since we, we have the, the buying and stuff is successful, um, but I want to be able to say what's available. Um, like I want to say what my available funds are basically. Um, I actually want to make a required command as well. That also gets that, you know, value. They like the amount required to buy. Cause that, that price will fluctuate like daily. Um, aren't required to buy and sell i mean the sell is easy it's always um like a minimum amount so we should be fine there but the available to buy thing is quite cool let me put a comment top here to do um add required command because that that could get, like take the current like values that we have and post it immediately which would be really cool um but before I get distracted by that, I want to continue and just say what's available after we create the sell order. So the sell order, we're going to want to say, if it's a sell order, because we would have just bought. So we need to say what's available now, like to buy. Actually, I think, yeah, we just want to say our, our full on available balances after that. So what often happens is we say successfully bought. But instead of that, I want to wait five seconds. I'll wait five seconds. There's a way for that. Uh, there's a nice clean little await new promise here. Yeah, that will do. Um, so once we, we actually get an order and everything, Ugh. can I wait until a specific time occurs? So I don't need to wait for that, right? No, I should just wait five seconds. Doesn't hurt to. Timer. Interval. Wanted to balance it. Okay, so we wait five seconds. Um, I can make that a util. They wait. Export function async wait then oh it's a void pretty much uh time by default will equal a thousand Uh, this is going to be a promise void. Bullet interval. Okay. So, now we can just await, wait, and say that. Uh, await, wait. 
So yeah, we had a function called wait. Um, that's pretty cool. I have a function called wait now. Waits a specific amount of time. Um, so we wait a certain amount of time. We wait five seconds before we decide to... I mean, let's do the wait here and then we can fetch the order afterwards because then we know that that's like not some weird an async quick thing um that's probably just slightly better i don't know uh what did i want to do now and then we wanted to get that the available balances so we'll say that we Where's my weight? No. Yeah. Successfully bought that for that. And then we'll say available balances. Uh I think maybe the pipe thing is just fine. Uh, let's make it like this. Okay. Available balance. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so is this for... This is for the buying B. Did I only had enough money to buy these? Yeah, I do think I have enough. Yarn start quickly. I can only test this once. Buy BTC. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, cool. Successfully bought. Oh, that's not good. I need to buy and then successfully create the sell order. Okay, it half works. If this this wait is happening too soon. The wait has to happen all the way down there. That's where it has to happen. Then um, this available balances thing. What? The available balances thing has to happen over here. I was wondering why that took so long. So it's going to say successfully bought this and then wait five seconds to say successfully created the sell order. Um, we need to make the sell order and then get the available balance afterwards and the available balance we need to wait five seconds for that so although that's it that's not too complicated to do on ethereum as well we just need to wait till this happens and wait five seconds and then add add that last little bit in that in there should be good to go so we've handled the buy but we might need to handle the sell now which is our big issue <laughs> yeah now we can buy eth oh crap i don't have enough money okay what's up with this required why is that so high Yeah, where do we have required in here? Yeah, that's fine. Wait, why are you? Damn it. Round price to pay it, dude. Uh, 
Okay, this buy price needs to be USDC. We should be using the rounding price to pair. Should be using um, USDC like this. Okay, so I run this again because I don't want that like crazy, you know, kind of stuff in there. The amount that we need to buy will be higher, you know. It's okay that we can use that much, but we're just gonna round it to something and round it up, you know. Um, do that, and that should do the trick. Okay, so if we try to buy now, we'll say not enough funds to buy ETH. Uh, we have that much. So we have 3-3, three, three, but we require, you know, 40 cents more. And obviously we can't buy Bitcoin either. Wait, what's going on? <gasps> the buys are still happening. No wait. Trade executed bought at fifty one two eight nine. Uh hang on. Oh, I successfully created a sell order. Oh the the buying Bitcoin worked. Yeah, turn the bot off. <laughs> oh, it's because I sold and then the buy happened immediately afterwards. So we bought Bitcoin. So I'm, I'm looking at my phone basically. We bought it 49913, then automatically sold at like a hundred rands worth more, like four minutes later, and then then we sold a bit more higher again, and then I was able to buy again. So theoretically Theoretically I can buy some ETH now. Bought ETH for that. Okay, and then we successfully created a sell order. Which happens. So the sell order happens immediately and then we wait and check available balances. So I, I feel like I should write like a freaking picture of what happens. Like basically we buy, we fetch order information so that we can immediately create a sell order. We create the sell order, that happens. Then we wait five seconds before printing that this line over here um so that's how that works um it's pretty cool um yeah what am i doing uh yeah we got some money and the buying eth works yeah okay, that's really good Uh, added by check. Okay, guys, that, that was pretty good. I'm quite impressed. It's been about an hour, and I've just been told that I can keep going on for longer. So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna take, like, a little... Take a five. Go grab some water. I need to think. Next up, we're going to do the same thing we just did, but do it for sell. I'm sure it will go a lot quicker on selling because we've ironed out the sort of process now and what we want to do, which is really cool. So, yeah. We're going to start the music playlist over so we can do that. But, yeah, I will be right back. Um, be right back. Go crazy in comments. Do your thing. <laughs> 